Hi, my name is John Dooley, and I am the entomologist for the United States Department of Agriculture, Plant Protection and Quarantine at San Francisco, California. My specialty is that I identify all of the white flies and armored scales that accompany shipments coming into the country from all over the world. Now take your slide for fear in, uh, for Pseudalocastus cockerelli. You notice this is very, very elongated as well. But this, this genus has many of, uh, has about five species that are pear-shaped too. So the shape may not mean that much. Now if you look at the key for Pseudolocastus, medial margin of L1 lobes forming a notch in the pygidium that is also yoked. If you follow this one up in here on the LCD screen, you'll notice it has, a, it looks like a sclerotized um, structure that goes all the way around to where the medium lobes are. And the medium lobes are divergent and actually sunken into the uh, into the base of the uh, medium part of the pygidium. Yoked means that it's connected, that both lobes are connected by some type of a sclerotized bridge or band. So take a look at your, uh, on your specimen and take a look at that. It may be like a, uh, a structure right connecting the two tips. It could look like a whole band going all the way around. But that also is important because there's another one that uh, is similar to this, but uh, I don't believe has that type of uh, yoke structure uh, that occurs also on grasses. Uh, this particular Pseudolocastus cockerelli normally does not. It occurs on other types of plants. But anyway, that's a very important structure to look at. Um, Paravalvular pores are again in five clusters. Oh, the other thing I wanted to show you first before the paravalvular pores. It's also important. If you look down at the base of your medium lobes, you can barely see them here. They're very, very minute, but this is also extremely important. They have a pair of CD coming out of the medium lobes. That also indicative of this genus. If it doesn't have any CD at all, it's going to be one of two other genera, a Cayenaspis or Duplachyonaspis. Kyanaspis and Pseudolocastus used to be under the same genus years ago. Then they split it. But um, uh, Pseudolocastus always has a pair of CD. Some of the CD is very, very long. Some of the CD is very, very short. And that's something else that you'll have to be able to uh, recognize. Okay, now here. These, the, these are your paravalvular pores. There's five clusters. One cluster here, it seems to merge almost with this cluster on top. Then you have a medium cluster, and then you have anterior and posterior cluster, lateral cluster. So you have five pairs, and that is also specific for uh, Coccarelli. Incidentally, if you get something like this and you don't see any, any perivolvular pores, almost all Pseudolocaspids, as far as I know, have perivolvular pores. So if you don't have perivolvular pores and it keys out to Pseudolocaspids, it's probably an immature. And then uh, just as a refresher, which is still important to keep emphasizing, is looking at the marginal duct, especially that are real thick orifices like this, and if you get them in really high power, you will also see that they're double barred, and that's very, very important, okay? And the best, time, best place to look for the double barred when they ask for the key is go along the margin. They're the most obvious. And the last thing, we're talking about um, macro ducts again. See if I can find it here. Oh, here. Here is your anal pore. Your anal pore is a dorsal pore for the excretion of uh, material, waste material. However, the, uh, next to the anal pore, you see all these different rows of macro ducts. The arrangement and the number in each of those rows is very specific depending on the species you're talking about. And it does not, always, it does not only occur in Pseudolocastus, it occurs in several other genera. But what's important with this particular species, there's about three species that has these two ducts, either one or two ducts, that are associated or close to the anal pore. And these ducts usually will fall between the anal pore and where the perivolvular pore clusters are or alongside the perivolvular pore clusters. 
Don't forget, these poor perivolvular pore clusters are ventral, the anal pore is dorsal, and the macro ducts are dorsal. So in order to see a lot of this, you have to focus in and out both uh, planes, the ventral and the dorsal plane. There are, as I said, about three. Now, I've seen quite a few come in here where they don't have any ducts, and used, they may be undescribed species. And I've seen some in which they have up to four to five ducts in the same area. And it's a different species, normally from Korea or Taiwan, Asia, that area. But if they only have two, most likely they're going to be this particular species, Cockerelli, Cockerell scale, they call it, Cockerelli. And uh, that, th those arrangements are very, very important. Other ones will have these big ducts all over the pagidium, but they won't be in any type of series or rows. They'll be just randomly distributed throughout the pygidium. So these are the ones that you also uh, sometimes will need to count in order to find out what species you have. This is probably one of the more common ones, uh, Sudalacaspis cockerelli. I'm, I'm not sure if it's cockerel scale or if it's coolie scale, but anyway, uh, this is probably one of the more common ones that occurs worldwide everywhere, almost every state, I think. 